I use Ryobi parts often for uh, basic uh, home economics, um, and uh, that that's mostly uh, you know using an electrical drill or uh, fine tuning uh, uh, projects, uh, and mostly uh, do it yourself projects. And uh, I just began to feel really um, uh, delayed. I don't know. I'm sure maybe. But uh, yeah, I'm so new to all of this. Um, but I call and I call Ryan B, the 1 800 number, and I don't get any kind of reply. And then I'm on the phone for like over an hour. Um, and uh, it's, like, uh, it's like they have these, uh, you know, staffs or associates with Ryobi, and they just, a lot of them um, don't respond back. It's a big issue to me because, you know, we, we want, you know, we're asking questions and uh, we, we're trying to get the parts, the tools and, and things like that. For instance, um, I had an electrical gun that may have caught a little bit of humidity or a bit of uh, heat a few months ago. And it was working fine until it stopped operating. And then I called Ryobi customer support and they kept me on hold for over two hours and 45 minutes. And... I don't know. I'm just so new to this. We could be doing anything within two hours and 45 minutes, doing DIY projects and praying, whatever. But you know, the, the, the points are that um, and the customer service really sucks. I can't get to this customer service in Ryobi. And then um, I, I call and I ask, uh, you know, well, um, I, I need this and this Ryobi part. <laughs> and um, they say, oh, well, uh, let me uh, connect you to our um, – other uh, Ryobi team and I'm there on the phone for like an hour and a half every day. And then it's, it's you know, no one likes to complain, but when, you know, there's uh, parts that have a uh, warranty on them. We, we want our things because things break. Okay. That's why we ask. And um, this alone is kind of a, a, a barrier that, you know, this is a burdensome, you know, and, and two, it doesn't happen. I mean, you know, come on out. We're doing DIY projects and we want our, you know, we want to use our tools for things, for home economic projects and things like that. I began learning how to cut miter saw in sixth grade. So I know what it is to use these uh, uh, saw blades like Diablo and Dewalt because they're the best out there. And uh, sometimes there are these inconveniences because we like to use our items knowing that they have that too. So, um, you know, a big issue uh, also was that a lot of the, um, a lot of the Ryobi uh, blades and things like that, some of them weren't having an expiration date on them. So we don't know, you know and it's just not you and I, but it too is other people that we, we don't know if uh, the um, expiration dates are false, if not, or if there aren't any and if, something is at fault with a uh, miter saw blade ripping in half. Um, so, you know, I, I believe a lot of these uh, issues have to uh, abide by certification. You know, do these items have an expiration date on them? If so, that's great. There's no worries. Uh, but, uh, you know, like people have said before, like you've said before, safety is the number one priority in, in many uh, do-it-yourself projects. And when things don't have an expiration date on them, people want to call for help. They want to ask, is this item, is this item expired? Uh, and if so, ask, is it possible to require about a new item? And, and that's what I'm trying to tell you. It's like I'm using he or she, and it's because we're all in this GYI project, and, and this whole digital streaming age is so new to me. Um, so now it's like we got to be very careful what tools we use um, because there's no uh, expiration date on them. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of like saying, well, <laughs> you know, A and B are using a, a, a tool, but they're unsure how to build something because there's no expiration date on the tool. It could, it could break. It could cause the, the tool to um, bend or uh, snap. So um, I'm glad you uh, called because 
this is very, very new to me. And when there's an issue, for instance, like a part that needs to be replaced, they're told to tell customers to send their tool <clears throat> like 500 miles away and pay shipping and handling. And then luckily, maybe within two weeks, uh, the tool is repaired. Okay. But that too is like, yeah, there's no, so there's no guarantee in it that it's going to arrive and it's going to work. But, you know, like you've said before that the, a lot of the, um, a lot of the customer service at Ryobi, they don't know what they're talking about. And then people call and they're placed on hold for an hour or two hours. And they're, they're told, Oh, well, um, no, this tool may, may be under warranty. Uh, this, uh, this electrical hand tool may be under warranty, but it doesn't cover a force majeure or issues involving um, a God, a law. And you're like, uh, well, then you're lying because you have a tool that either is not working because of acts of God or a lot, but is working, but it's not working because both aren't working. <laughs> so, yeah, like you said earlier, you know, these, these things are a little trivial because DIYers, they want to get their stuff completed. They want to get things done. You know, like you and me, they want to get these, these projects done, these streaming things, and even though they're new to us, we, we want to get them done efficiently and, and more importantly, safe. Um, so um, I'm glad there's uh, these um, uh, streaming uh options where we can, uh, you know, you could break this down by editing uh, with what's safe for first and then what's safe for secondly, because we want to avoid any issues that won't be safe upon using DY uh, tools and uh, completing tasks and DY projects that uh, are meant to uh, help. Um, yeah, they're, they're meant tools that are meant to uh, provide the uh, necessary um, features, the features to complete uh, DIY, do-it-yourself uh, projects. Uh, so, uh, my my story basically is a little bit all in that and all and edited. Um, and uh, when you edit this, you, you know, there's a lot of uh, composition that can be very useful. But when safety is not the first uh, priority. And there's tools out there that, like you say, don't have this expiration date on them. Diablo or a lot, or in between. You know, we're kind of we're we're consumers and we're not knowing this. And something happens, and then there's this, and there's no expiration date on it. But there's this with expiration date on it. But there's there's this, and the fingers cut off. It's like what's happening? <laughs> yeah, this is just like. Um, yeah, it's like it's almost like give it to me. There's no such thing, and uh, there's an accident or whatever has happened. So, I'm I'm glad that this is a um, a concern to many people because um, the issue is really mostly customer service. When, when we have a question uh, about Ryobi, we want to know: uh, is this item protected? Is this item? Um, uh, does this feature item have an expiration date on it? Uh, does this item have a warranty on it? One year, two year. Usually, Ryobi well, has three year warranty on items, but that's not the complaint. The complaint is the customer service. They don't call people. They don't reply back to people. When people call customer service Ryobi, it's always be on hold for one hour, one hour and thirty minutes, two hours, three hours and thirty minutes. And there's not that communication. So uh, I believe that they can improve their customer service. They can get five-star Ryobi customer service if there's just a little bit of improvement. Uh